That came out of nowhere. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for another top 10 unexpected deaths in horror movies. That means we're looking at more deaths from the horror genre that took audiences by surprise or subverted expectations. If you don't see a death you think should be on here, be sure to check out our original list of unexpected horror movie deaths. Also, since we will be discussing some pretty major plot points, a spoiler alert is now in effect. All right, let's get to the list. Number 10, Randy Meeks, Scream 2. Okay, let's be honest. We all expected Randy Meeks to bite the big one by the end of the first Scream film. I'm sorry, sorry. Oh my god, Randy, I thought you were dead. I probably should be. I never thought I'd be so happy to be a virgin. This character, played by Jamie Kennedy, was built up as being a horror movie aficionado. And so, because irony, we thought that he was doomed for sure. Wes Craven's creation was all about subverting expectations, however. So, when Randy survived the first film, we thought he might be a series fixture going forward. Why are you even here? Alas, this was not to be. Meeks was slaughtered by Ghostface in Gale's news van, with the entire ordeal being caught on tape. It's a shocking and brutal scene that genuinely caught us off guard. OJ? <laughs> Number 9. Rory Adams, Life Derivative of Alien or not, this underrated 2017 film did a great job of baiting and switching its audience both with its downer ending and the high body count. Ryan Reynolds' Rory Adams was front and center throughout much of the film's marketing, yet his character is the first to die, and in spectacularly gory fashion, no less. The newly discovered alien organism enters Rory's mouth and goes to town feasting on his insides before breaking out bigger and badder. We're not really used to seeing a star of Reynolds' caliber go out like this, but we gotta admit, it paints a memorable mental picture. That's so much bigger. Number 8. Sue Snell, The Rage, Carrie 2 This is another horror movie character who survived the first film, only to die in the sequel. Although, in Snell's case, it took 20 plus years for her number to come up. Night of the Prom. 73 people died. The Rage was a 1999 follow-up to Brian De Palma's classic adaptation of the Stephen King story, and featured a grown-up Sue Snell in her new role as a high school guidance counselor. She realizes the potential danger in Rachel Lang, a student who seems to possess the same telekinetic powers as Carrie White. Last night I took a look at your file. Your mom is at Arkham for schizophrenia. How's she doing? She's gonna be fine. She might not be the protagonist, but Sue's journey is central to the film's plot. So when she's killed as a result of Lang's burgeoning rage, the sense of shock and loss is very real. Number seven, Jenna Montgomery, Friday the 13th. The world of horror cinema is populated by many different archetypes, including the final girl. This is usually an intelligent, capable female lead who serves as the heroine and usually our lone survivor. The Friday the 13th franchise is no exception to this rule, having introduced various memorable final girls over the years. Jenna Montgomery is something of an anomaly, however, in that she's set up for a large part of the 2009 franchise reboot film as the lead. Do you want to come in for a second, grab a drink? Only to be killed by Jason Voorhees at the film's climax. It honestly comes out of nowhere for better or worse, leaving Clay Miller and his sister Whitney as the film's only survivors. Number 6. Derry Jenner, Jeepers Creepers The final girl trope in horror films may be well established, but the idea of a final guy never really gained as much steam within the genre. Male characters in horror films never seem truly safe. And rarely have we received a more stinging reminder than with the demise of Derry Jenner, one of the two leads in Victor Salva's controversial Jeepers Creepers franchise. We invest a lot of time following Derry and his sister Trish around. What the hell's his problem? Just get out of his way, Derry! And despite our horror movie conditioning, we even get attached. 
because of this connection, we expect to see them both come out on top against the Creeper. But Justin Long's character ends up abducted, maimed, and killed in the monster's lair. Number 5. Nancy Thompson, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors Remember how we mentioned earlier that Wes Craven loved to subvert the expectations of horror fans? Consider this another great example. Dream Warriors is a fan-favorite sequel to Craven's 1984 classic, a film that already shocked audiences with its killing of Tina Gray and Glenn Lance. <laughs> Heather Langenkamp's heroic Nancy Thompson returns here as a hospital intern who helps Kristen Parker and the Elm Street kids face off against Freddy Krueger. sleep again. Although Nancy and her new friends succeed in defeating Freddy, she suffers fatal wounds in the battle, and we see her somber funeral shortly before the film's conclusion. Him at all times, O oh people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Hear my cry, O oh God, listen to my prayer. Number 4. Robert Thorne, The Omen. Who says that good always has to triumph over evil? Well, what about this? In Revelations it says, he shall rise from the eternal sea. Fans of the Omen franchise know that Damien Thorne usually gets the upper hand against those who seek to destroy the spawn of the devil. This idea is hammered home quite effectively in the first film from 1976, which follows Damien's adopted father Robert as he discovers the truth behind a satanic son. In the film's climax, Robert is poised to make the ultimate sacrifice as he prostrates Damien on a church altar ceremonial dagger raised high to murder the boy he now knows to be the Antichrist. The police intervene before Robert can finish the deed, however, fatally shooting him down. This leaves Damien free to return, older and wiser, for future Omen sequels. Stop! Stop or I'll fire! Number 3. Billy Drayton, The Mist the death of children in film is something that needs to be handled very carefully. There's no denying the shock value when such an instance occurs, however, as evidenced by the gut punch ending to Stephen King's The Mist. Don't go out there. There's something in the mist. It took John Lee. Screw that. I'm getting to my car. Billy Drayton actually survives King's original story, but this 2007 adaptation instead places the young boy, his father David, and others in a situation where David is forced to make an ultimately tragic decision. He chooses to mercy kill his son and everyone in the car before the mist creatures attack, intending to let the creatures finish him. After David commits the heartbreaking act, however, the mist recedes to reveal that rescuers have arrived and that his son needn't have died. <laughs> Number 2. Dick Halloran, The Shining Dick Halloran is another famous example of a Stephen King character suffering a very different fate on screen than he did on the printed page. Hi, Lloyd. A little slow tonight, isn't it? <laughs> it's no secret by now that King himself disliked Stanley Kubrick's 1980 adaptation of The Shining, with the fate of Halloran's character being just one of the changes the director undertook during filming. Much is made on screen of Dick's contact with Danny Torrance and his journey to rescue him from his father in the Overlook Hotel. In the novel, Dick succeeds and ends up being a character mentioned in other King stories, such as It and Insomnia. Kubrick, however, gives Scatman Crothers Halloran an ignoble end at the blade of Jack Torrance's axe. I gotta tell you, I read The Shining before I saw the movie, and when that death happened, I was mighty surprised. But I guess that is how you leave your own mark on a pretty iconic piece of pop culture. Anyway, um, however, we were all surprised when we found out our number one pick had died, so let's look through the memorial that is our honorable mentions, and then we'll see who that is. Lucky kids with silver shamrock masks, gather round your TV set, put on your masks, and watch. Honey, don't get too close. You'll ruin your eye. 
I will not let this plane crash be the most important thing in my life! Gah! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Dr. Malcolm Crow, The Sixth Sense Many movie fans were floored by the ending of M. Night Shyamalan's breakout 2001 film The Sixth Sense, in which it's revealed that the protagonist, Dr. Malcolm Crow, was actually dead the entire time. Dead people like in graves and coffins? Walking around like regular people. They don't see each other. They only see what they want to see. The reason it works so well is because of the care that went into depicting Bruce Willis's character as a central part of the narrative. We have every reason to believe that Crow survived the attack from his former patient, and so we never doubt his status as living, even as he tries to help a young boy who claims to see dead people. I see dead people. The Sixth Sense is so good at filtering Crow into his surroundings that even upon repeat viewings, you can't help but get lost in the story. What is it? What? Why did you leave me? Leave you. Honestly, I remember the first time I saw The Sixth Sense and I could not function for the rest of the day because I was so shocked. Anyway, what about you guys? Which unexpected horror movie death surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments or come talk to me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton. Also, be sure to like and subscribe and please watch this other video.